What's up, everybody? This is your brother Speech from the group Arrested Development. And right now, you are listening to the Street Report. Street Report. Street Report. Street Report. New Artist Grammy and a rap group Nod went to Arrested Development. Well, what we're about is life music, you know. We try to give people um, hope and, and try to sort of lay a soundtrack for life. Life, life, life. All right. Life, life. Talk to speech. Yeah, this is speech. Hey, what's... Leave a message. Uh, leave, leave a message. Apple Hold on, my email says 1030 Central. It's 1030 Central. Man, I swear, some of these dudes, they, they think they're too big. You know what I mean? Watch. Let them answer the phone. Let this guy answer the phone. I'm going to tell him how I feel about this. I, I was going to have a great interview for you guys. Just let him answer. Come on. Answer the phone. Come on, guy. Hello, this is Speech. Speech. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. This is Jeff? Yes, sir. Good, man. Good. Oh, well, he, you know, he answered. So, you know, let him slide. Nah, I'm just messing with you. His dude was cool as hell. Y'all got to stick around for this whole interview. And uh, and at the end, I'll talk to you again. But thank you for listening to the Street Report, and uh, don't forget to share. <laughs> All right, so welcome, Speech Man. How you been? Man, I've been actually really good. Like, you know, what I'm saying like life has been treating me very well. My yeah. my um my music is like exciting to me. I mean, the group is fired up. We're all like doing our thing. And then my daughter, she's like an actress on a, a hit TV show on BET called The Quad. Really? And so she, it's her first time ever really having a series, and so she's fired up. She's one of the main characters. Her, her character's name is Noni. And um, so we're fired up about that. Our son is almost finished in college, and he's about to do his thing. So it's like, you know, as a dad and as a husband, I'm just fired up. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, and as a musician, you know, it's, it's, it's good good vibes right now. Yeah, so that, that's serious senses of accomplishment you know you because because i tell you what it's, it's hard enough raising kids but when you you know you're dealing with raising kids and you're on the road a lot you know that that's really hard it is you're right and you know i was blessed because i've been able to take my kids with me like most of my touring so my kids have pretty much been everywhere around the world and oh that's you awesome. know that's a blessing not every artist is able to do that so definitely um me and my queen. In fact, I take my queen with me too. I call my wife my queen. Smart. I take her with me too. So, you know, it's for numerous reasons, but you know, like it's good to have the family with me everywhere I go. Yeah, that's know? great. That's awesome. And I guess that that first album kind of afforded you to do because, like, the first album was so incredibly popular, and uh, like, like when I was a, I was I was pretty young when it came out. I want to say. What was that, like, 92? Yep, 92 yeah. it came out. I was, uh, man, I was in middle school, or, yeah, probably, like, nice. yeah, nice. yeah, probably, like, eighth grade or so, so I remember when it came out, and, and like, hearing it, it sounded so different, you know, it, it was, it was kind of yeah. like this refreshing, because uh, it was, it was already at a point where hip-hop was starting to become a lot more negative, and, and, you know, uh, so 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 you guys came in and from Atlanta of all places, uh, yeah. And and this this brisk of new, you know, it it was just a completely new sound and it was positive and it had this energy to it. And uh, 
I remember my, my girlfriend at the time actually turned me on to Arrested Development. Nice. Because I was steady. That's a good woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was steadily listening to, uh, you know, like like I was a hard, I, I rap myself and, and I was always like all about the lyrics and, you know, Rock Him and Big Daddy Kane and, you know, uh, and then, and then you know, it evolved into like the the California cats with the NWA and everything. I started getting into all that DJ Quick and, but but I did feel like that just a lot of negativity was taken over and hip hop had lost a little bit of that like good vibes feel that it had in the beginning. So so like I say, when when Arrested Development came in with this new sound, it uh it kind of brought me back to that like yeah, hip hop can be fun, you know? Yeah, yeah. no doubt about it. I- you know, I came from like a lover of hip hop music. I tried the gangster thing personally. Yeah. Um, it, it wasn't me. Yeah. I'm not saying listening to it, but actually we were trying to do it <laughs> as mm-hmm. hip hop artists. And it wasn't us. It just, you know, at the end of the day, we realized we were just trying to imitate right. what was successful and we wasn't really being honest. And so, um, you know, we started to switch it up and found success that way. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and then like with with our music, like it does, it has a feel good energy, and I think that's probably one of the strange and unique things about Arrested Development was that even though we might we might address a real serious topic, but the song will still have this feel good vibe to it. Like right. Tennessee, um, Tennessee was about the death of my grandmother, and then the same week my brother, and it's wow. a prayer. So I mean, if you think about that song, like. It almost reminds me of Earth, When It Fires Reasons where, you know, you have to really listen to the lyrics to even know what that song Reasons is about with Earth, When It Fires. But like, you know, a lot of people would play that song for their wedding. Right. You know, when it's really about a dude cheating on somebody, you know what I'm saying? So like, (laughs) I think Arrested Development similar. Take care, Daniel. I think Arrested Development similar in the sense of Tennessee is about death and about loss. But people rock to it, and that's. But see, to me, that's like the beauty of music. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you could you could accomplish that through 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 a cool song. Right. Yeah. No. Definitely. And and you you guys. Uh, that's the other thing is the subject matter. You, it, you so many subjects that you cover, and, and every song is like a little bit deeper than the surface. You know, like uh, I remember Mr. Wendell when when that came out to me, I was like, wow, check them out. I mean, like just the ability and the reasoning for 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 you to uh take such a different approach uh i think is really what caught what helped you catch fire in that first place is that it was just like nothing else you know uh right yeah you know, i mean yeah. who else is talking about the struggles of a homeless dude you know and uh right yeah no nah, it was it was definitely very dope A dollar. In fact, no, brother man, here, have two. Two dollars means a snack for me, but it means a big deal to you. Be strong, serve God only. Know that if you do, beautiful heaven awaits. As to pull my rope for the first time, I saw a man with no clothes, no money, no plate, Mr. Wendell. That's his name. No one ever knew his name, cause he's a no one. Never thought twice about spending on an old bum until I had the chance to really get to know one. Now that I know him, to give him money isn't charity. He gives me some knowledge, I buy him some shoes. And to think blacks spend all their money on big colleges, still most of y'all come out confused. Go ahead, Mr. Wendell. Go ahead, Mr. Wimp. Mr. Wendell has freedom, a free that you and I think is dumb. Free to be without the worries of a quick to this society, for Mr. Wendell's a bum. His only worries are sickness and an occasional harassment by the police in their chase. Uncivilized, we call him, but I just saw him eat off the food we waste. Civilization, are we really civilized? Yes or no? Who are we to judge when thousands of innocent men could be brutally enslaved or killed over a racist grudge? Mr. Wendell has tried to warn us about our ways, but we don't hear him talk. Is it his? 
his fault when we've gone too far and we got too far because of him we've walked. Mr. Wendell, a man, a human in flesh, but not by law. I bid you dignity to stand with pride. Realize that all in all, you stand tall. Go ahead, Mr. Wendell. Started the 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 group with uh, with a DJ headliner, right? Yep, me and headliner. Yep. Okay, and uh, I mean, so he he was with on the first album with you, but after that, you had a falling out. Is that right? Or well, he was really on the first album and second album. Okay, but by the second album, the group was extremely strained. I mean, yeah, when we were touring. We were touring with separate buses. Headliner had a bus with some of the members. I had a bus with some of the other members. Yeah. And the group, you know, I mean, not only that, in the studio, we was never in the studio at the same time. It's the worst circumstances to record an album on there, you know. Yeah. And yet, you know, we were making a lot of money. It was a big sort of machinery at the time, you know, big touring machine, big. Yeah, I imagine. Big it was studio huge. And, and production machine and it was just a very big machine and so being that it was our first album that did so well we honestly just didn't know how to deal with all of that yeah like now that i'm older you know it's one of those things that if i had a chance to talk to my younger self i would say this that and the other right the same difference with headliner i think like we are we're cool now we're not best friends or nothing like that and we'll probably never be but yeah we're cool like if we see each other we care about each other we know that we made some mistakes as younger people in that you know, right. life goes on and we're just trying to support each other as, as, as brothers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and and it's man, such yeah, a, it was tough. It, it's a big thing, you know, going from rags to riches so fast kind of thing. Like, you know, like, That's oh, exactly right. yeah, this huge overnight success. It's, uh, especially when you're not a put together group, like some boy band and stuff like that, or put together groups or, or a singer like, a, and this is not dissing anybody, by the way, but like right. Whitney Houston or whatever, who was sort of developed by a Clive Davis or by, a, you know, a Simon Cowell or whatever. Yeah. Those type artists is different because even though they don't know the industry, they got somebody that does know the industry that is, to be honest, ripping them off, unfortunately, but also guiding them enough to keep them together. Whereas with us, we were an organic group, so yeah, it, it, we didn't have that type of sort of role model person telling us how to do it. You know what I mean? And so it was tough, you know, going through all of that fame so quickly. Yeah, and then the record companies at the time were pretty, you know, not 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 to be trusted. I mean, you guys had a good lawyer, because so <laughs> I mean, well, to be honest with you, yeah, I mean, yeah, the record companies and even lawyers, to be honest, were pretty bad because. At this time, hip hop was still formulating. It yeah. hadn't really gotten rock solid yet. So what I mean by that is, the art of sampling was heavy, right. but we didn't know how sampling worked legally at that time. Right. Um, initially, sampling was just the wild, wild west, where you would sample whatever you want, and you didn't think you had to pay for it. Then the lawyers would come up with ways you had to pay for it, and you didn't know it. Right. So that plus legal issues weren't really formulated with hip hop yet because you didn't know how to. Unlike a band where, like, let's say you're U2 and the drummer wrote the drum part, the guitarist wrote the guitar part, the bass guy wrote the bass part. With hip-hop, it wasn't like that. You might have one cat in the crew that's more talented at sampling, and the rest of the crew maybe does good lyrics, right. but everybody didn't do one thing, you know, like where a band would do. So it was, it was very hard at that time, at least, how to formulate a successful formula you know what yeah. i mean and so i think like artists nowadays have the advantage of learning from artists like us so like a jay-z or 
Jay-Z got a chance to learn from a P. Diddy and from a Russell Simmons on how to be more of a mogul and how to start your, you know, right. your own record label and how to run that. And Dane Dash and all those guys had those advantages that we simply just didn't have. It was still formulated. You know what I mean? Right. Like hip-hop was still not really at its, at its most mature place. Right. Yeah, for sure. And now it's become such a powerhouse. Yeah, yeah. now hip-hop is, it's an industry that's, Everybody sort of, not everybody, but a lot of people know the way to go and how to do it, how to formulate your, your group agreement, which is not even a lot of groups nowadays when you think about it. It's yeah. a lot of solo artists mostly. You know, the days of Wu-Tang or Arrested Development or X-Clan or Public Enemy are pretty much over. I don't really know a lot of groups right now yeah. that exist where it's five, six members. You know what I'm saying? stick together. Like, and yeah. 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 That doesn't even really happen right now. It's more so Drake or Lil Wayne or Kendrick or... J. Cole or whatever, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. It's usually just one dude, maybe maybe two tops, you know what I mean? But it's rare that you find three or five, six members yeah. like it used to be. Right. Yeah, no doubt. So things are a lot easier to understand business wise, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit bit of a simpler formula. Yeah. No, yeah, no definitely doubt. a simpler formula. People nowadays know that they gotta diversify. Okay. You know, you may blow up from the strip club or from the radio or whatever. And then you know that you gotta basically okay. diversify, and you gotta get your little wicker, I mean your whiskey line or your clothing line, or you're gonna do your perfume line or whatever. Yeah. You know, depending on who you are as an artist, you're gonna do books, you know, or whatever. Right. It's like it's such a, okay, it's such a you know sort of worked out thing nowadays. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So that first album, I mean, it must have just been like life changing. I mean, because it went like what four times platinum. Yeah, in the that's States, wild. Five overall, yeah. Because we're talking about, I mean, like platinum then and platinum now are two completely different situations. This was people going and picking up copies on on, yeah. on vinyl yeah. and CD and cassette. You know, I mean, the people had to go to no the doubt. store to get this stuff. And I yep. mean, you're right. These are huge no numbers, internet. Doug. Yeah, no internet, nothing like that. I mean, this is strictly like word of mouth and, and, and then, of course, you know, the radio play. I need some time to ease my mind. 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 Busting in a world that I don't know from my mama's lips between my mama's hips. I'm caught up by her hands because she understands it's that bond that keeps the movement moving on. Surrounded with so many insecurities Backstabbing is like breathing when in poverty I try to make my sanity with the insane Got a secondary to most when they scrap for money But then again, money can cause even more death When an African turns bigger, step and fetch it all I just say when price is right, you can buy it So, well, not me, cause I don't truly really give a care about you I move in poverty and wealth, but I surely move And sick of it with your beat or your whack-ass group My break beat is to break away from your thing All these things you put on me makes this brother Between my mama's 
No doubt about it. It's, it was a, but you know, honestly, I miss those days. Yeah. Not just because I'm from those days, but I miss the days when the music was taken more seriously. Like, yeah. you know, I don't know if you know this, but like nowadays, to sell a million copies is very hard. So like, oh even yeah, the top artists might sell a, a maximum of two million copies. Right. Like I'm talking about Adele or Drake or whoever. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's very tough to sell a million copies today. Yeah. I don't care who you are, like, and how big you are. No doubt. So it may be one or two artists that actually make that number. Um, maybe 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 about five artists per year that make that number of a million copies. Yeah. Not of their single, but of their actual album. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. No doubt. Well, I miss that, and I'm I also miss you know like like when we were younger, radio DJs had a little bit more power over what they could play and stuff. Oh my god! And, and dude, I think that's, that's really a huge the, thing. Dude, that's when you say huge. It's literally like Bernie Sanders. It's huge. Yeah, because, it's huge. I mean, dude, yeah. it's huge, man. Yeah. Like, that's on the real, though. Like, on the real, that was the heartbeat of hip-hop. Not right. Not just hip-hop, but good music, period, man. And Definitely. Those days are gone, man. Like, now program directors don't really have a lot of power to choose records, and DJs don't either. Like, they're playing program stuff, and they got about 23 songs they're going to play per day, and that's it. And that stuff is being determined by central offices of whoever owns that radio station, some huge corporation like a Clear Channel or what right. have you, Radio Radio One or whatever. And, you know, unfortunately, it's just not as much activism where a DJ can literally say, yo, I'm about to break this joint right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no doubt. Not not on um, top radio. I mean, some of the top radio stations at least. You know, satellite radio may be a little more controlled. And even that, a lot of that stuff, I've been at XM, Sirius XM and stuff like that. Yeah. A lot of those cats already have this stuff programmed the whole week, you know, like yep. they've already done their shows for the whole week. It's like already worked out. So right. It's pretty it's pretty pretty real like how big a DJ used to play a role in breaking great music. Oh yeah, no doubt. Cuz cuz you know, like like a lot of times I I I know I, I've said it, you know, like I almost feel like we're in the platinum age of hip hop right now cuz there's so much great hip hop music out there right now. There's there's artists out there right now that are making like the dopest shit ever. But nobody knows of it because exactly. it's not pushed in your face and stuff. But if you're willing to dig a little bit, like music is great right now, you know. So I'm with you. I agree, yeah. and, and I think it's sad though that because you know I see it. I see it from both sides. I see the side of these hip hop artists that are doing, like you said, phenomenal music. But give them two or three years, they stop and they end up just doing regular odd jobs. And I see them, I actually know them by name. I'm thinking of their faces right now. Right. And it's because they couldn't make a living from it. Yeah, it's you like, can't. Dude, you know, once you start getting older and if you have a kid or two, you yeah. know, you, you have to start making decisions. It's like, well, I never made a dime for my music, but it was crazy. It was hot. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, oh, yeah. And everyone loved it that heard it, but most people didn't hear it. You know what I mean? So it's sad that, that it's like that. I know, know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. You know what I mean? It's yeah. It's real sad, man. I see it. This shows where we we're the headliners and there's groups that open up for us and I'm like they're sick, right? And then we'll see them like a year or two later. We'll go into the next town. I mean that same city, and we'll hear that man they quit, you know, or or we'll see one of them, one of the members, and we'll talk to them and it's like, yeah, man, you know, we just couldn't hold it together, man. Everybody had to sort of get work and do their thing, you know. Yeah. And so it's like, man, man, that's so sad. We got big groups right in front of us, and people are are not aware. It's sad too that a lot of people uh, in the general public that just don't don't deal with making music and stuff like they don't understand either. Like they don't they don't seem to realize how much work 
it actually is to put together a great album and, uh, That's exactly and right. market it. And, you know, you, I mean, it, it, a lot of work goes into making music. And then touring and Without stuff can be super strenuous. I mean, sometimes you're on Without. that tour bus going across the country, like no sleep, you know what I mean? And you got to get up and do it every day. And, and I mean, as, as great as uh, everyday people is as a track, you might be tired of playing it by now. <laughs> but but you're right. still gonna do yeah. it because I mean that's your job and yeah it's work yeah, and it is work it's people, work people pay people pay to to, to hear certain tracks and you know you want to make sure you represent but you know it it is very tough and you're right the days of appreciating music the way it should be appreciated yeah. is. It's not literally disappeared but it's disappeared for so many artists well it's be- like it's become more niche for Drake. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. for Drake or Kendrick or a J. Cole or a Kanye or whatever. Sure, people are going to really listen to those songs and they're going to celebrate each song and they're going to celebrate the album and they're going to give it its proper... And, and even that, don't get me wrong, like with with the age of the internet, even a Drake album or let's say a, a, a Kanye record or a Kendrick record for that matter. Yeah. Kendrick can drop a record today and about a month from now, it's still like, okay, what's next? Yeah. Whereas when our record, for instance, came out three years, five months, two days, that record was relevant for a year, two years, a year and a half. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Because that's how music was appreciated back in the day. Definitely. And it's just, it's more disposable now than it ever had been yeah. um, in my lifetime. I wish life could be a dream. Sometimes I Sometimes I see it all as a dream. Shades to my window, I see crime, crime of the mind. I don't understand why, so a prayer for guidance I try. Lord, please give me strength to find what's right, what's right in these times.
Well, shortly after that album came out, uh, you scored that uh, Malcolm X soundtrack spot, right? Yeah, and there wasn't yep. it wasn't like full of hip hop music or anything. I mean, you were kind of like a almost a lone wolf amongst uh, a lot of older music and stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. We um, that was thanks to Chuck D. Oh, okay. Uh, Chuck D. had Spike Lee was a, a huge fan of our group. Yeah, and he had actually initially asked us to do music to a uh, um, John Coltrane movie he was going to do called Love Supreme. And we was down with that. Yeah. But then he ch- he changed his mind, and he did Mo Better Blues. Then his next movie was gonna be Malcolm X, and he was like, he went to Chuck and him said, "Yo, I need another fight to power, man. We got to do something hot for Malcolm X." But Chuck and him were going through some legal issues with Professor Griff and and blah blah blah. He couldn't do it. Yeah. So, um, Chuck said, "Yo, you got to get Arrested Development," and he said, "Man, that would be it." So that's. I didn't even know that, by the way, until like last year, Chuck told me that. He's like, man, oh, wow. I got you that gig. And me and Chuck are cool. So I was like, man, thank you. I mean, Chuck always been my hero anyway. So, yeah. you know, when he when he said he got got us that gig, it made sense to me. But I was like, wow, well, Spike Lee's been one of my heroes too, uh, movie-wise. So, yeah. it was, you know, it was definitely an honor to be able to do that. Yeah. But Chuck D has a powerful voice, ain't it? Oh my gosh! I mean, Chuck D. For me, I mean, you know, everybody has their their things that they sort of judge the best hip hop off. And for me, Chuck D. is my favorite hip hop artist because yeah. of what he's contributed to the entire culture. You know, yeah. like not just like to me, the beats are to be compared with anybody's beat. Yeah. His rhymes are so powerful, like his voice and what he said and right. what he brought to the culture to me, just weighs heavier than everybody else, in my opinion. But that's right. just mine. I mean, I know everybody has their different, you know, takes, and, I'm, and I'm, I respect that. Yeah, but I appreciate somebody yeah. who just won't bend, you know? Uh, he's somebody no, who, no. he's always had his principles, and uh, and that's that's it, you know? There's no way around what, he's going to do what he wants to do. Yep, you know, and that's it, exactly right. Yeah. And I mean, but see, you know, to me, that's what he said in Rebel Without a Pause, is like, Cause I'm a man, right? You know what I'm saying? Like he's like he's like I'm a man. Yep. I'm gonna be a man. It's like to me, that's what a real man should do. He should do. He should be him. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, that, and despite the trends and all the fads, I'm still gonna be me. I'm. That's to me what a real man does. And that's why I can understand when you say you know that that's somebody that you always looked up to and respected because when I look at your music, I kind of see the same thing. You know, when you oh, yeah, when you came is, out, yeah. it was all original. Nobody sounded like you. You weren't trying to imitate anybody. You come out with your own thing, and you and you've stuck to doing your thing. You know, and and it, certainly I respect that. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. It's one of the reasons I want. I want. You know, I I I try to reach back, and who I want to talk to is the people that I truly respect. I don't care how many. Thank you. How many downloads somebody gets? How many? How much money they got? None of that stuff. But like, if I respect you for your talent and your, uh, you know, craftiness, and you know, th- I mean, that's that's what I want to talk to. I want to see, you know, what makes you tick as an artist. So, you know, going back, what what is your creative process? Because you use a lot of, uh, especially in the more recent albums, you're using a lot more like, you know, like live instruments and stuff, aren't you? I mean. Yeah. So my creative process, honestly, it just depends on what's in front of me. Yeah. So like I started off as a DJ. Okay. So because of that, you know, when I, before I had samplers, I would literally spin records and then have two, two cassette decks. Yep. Bye bye Taylor. Have two cassette decks and literally go back and forth and, and keep looping stuff. Yeah. I but used then to when that. I got samplers, I was sampling. And then when I got a little, um, band members started to come into my circle yeah. and started to inquire, you know, a- incorporate that. So to be honest with you, brother, this depends on what's in front of me because over the years um, I've done music of different types. And, and so, you know, my creativity just keeps flowing with whatever's in front of me, you know? That's awesome. Cause I don't know if you know, I've done, I've done like six solo albums and um, they did extremely well in Japan. So like, yeah, I had a whole solo career as well. And so like, um, I was gonna bring that three, up. Three of three of those albums went gold. 
three of the six went gold. The other ones were close to gold. So like, you know, some real numbers and some real fans, some real tours, all of that stuff. So like, and that was more singing stuff. So it's like, I just have a, um, for me, it's, it's really all about just being creative and, and, yeah. and staying busy on your creativity. You Keeping know? it moving. That needs to go. I can't keep stagnant in my dome. God, you got to pop a mask for a loan. I need to get on petting this out my life. They've been feeding me so much stress and strife. And yo, I ain't staying in the garden no more. I'm cleaning up my house, I'm mopping up my flows. I'm moving on, baby. Situations, no more exploitation, no more procrastination. I ain't holding back no more. And if you ain't down, then hit the door. I'm not gonna slow my pace and cheat myself. Trying to lag behind the hang with someone else. No, I got a reason that I'm here alive. So I'm gonna keep my stand aside. No more wax stuff to stay cool by you. I make new friends, it's on a mission too. It's just too crazy playing by no rules. Trying to fix my life, but ain't got no tools. Baby, use crazy if you think you'll win. Cause the race that you're running in ain't got no end. Yeah, keep it moving. I was gonna bring that up though. You're huge in Japan, like today. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. Your Japanese audience, Thank God. yeah, they love Thank you. God. And uh, how, how do you so feel about that? Because like, yeah. like a lot of times people say, "Man, hip hop is dead." But I say, "Wait a minute, I don't think she's dead. I think she just kind of moved around a little bit." <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, yeah, I'm with you on cause, that. Because yeah. like Australia, you, you know, like I hear like what is considered pop rap music in australia like bliss and so and, and and uh you know like some of these cats you know like in phases crew and stuff like these dudes uh are you know like according to them that's pop music but when i hear it i'm like damn that's, right that's pretty good hip-hop right there like like if that was on our exactly. radio here we'd be blessed right <laughs> right know? exactly uh, i'm with you I'm, I'm really proud that you know about this stuff that like the overseas hip-hop i mean yeah. you're right because overseas they didn't totally get on board with what we did in america where you know they sort of abandoned the whole musicality aspect of right. it or a lot of it i mean there's some artists that still do it and i'm talking about pop artists now yeah like you know we've we've sort of went straight up to like trap beats and, and the same kick and snare but you can have fun with that yeah. and same basic beat per minute but you can still have a little fun with how you're going to create it but it's still pretty much the same song yeah. at the end of the day, but with a little difference. Of course, Kendrick and there's people that that have defied that, and I and I love that. Yeah, definitely. But in but in general, that's sort of the rule of thumb for hip hop right now in America. But they didn't always get on board with that in Japan, and same difference with um, Europe and in Australia, right. New Zealand. Yeah, they they still feeling that '90s stuff, and yeah. they're feeling like, yo, diversity is to be celebrated, not 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 this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like let let people be diverse. And of of know? all places like UK, like you you would think the UK would be more on this bullshit like we're on, but but nah, there's a lot of super dope hip hop in the UK. So I agree. So what is you know? And and, and I I hate to put it on one one thing or whatever, but it seems to me like when Clear Channel bought out like all the radio stations, that went Dude, that's when shit went nail. downhill. You know. And I don't know if you know, 1996 Telecommunication Act. Yeah. 
was signed by Bill Clinton in, in 1996. Yep. What that did is it allowed monopolies where it allowed Clear Channel to buy up all the radio stations in a small yep. market or a, or a big market. And now they would determine the, the playlist for all the stations across the nation yeah. based in Texas or wherever. They would determine the playlist for everybody. It's crazy. So that's when you started to have this monolithic sound in hip hop. And that was the only stuff that was successful. The stuff that, you know, these, these huge conglomerates would, would support. And of course, like I said earlier in this conversation, it might be 23, 25 songs a day. Yeah. You know, if that. Yeah. So, you know, it leaves a lot of other artists out of the, the discovery opportunity, you know what I'm saying, to get discovered. Right. Because I'm a firm believer that even our music right now, if it was played on the radio with any consistency, I think it would find an audience. And it oh, would be, yeah. It would be a lot of people saying, yo, that's hot. Right. I like I like the rest of the development. But because it's not being played a lot, then, of course, you know, people, number one, don't even know it exists. And then number two, you've, you've been there before, and I have too. Like, when a song comes out, and you may not even like it at first. It could be even by an artist that you like. Right. But then you hear it so much that after a while, it's like, you know what it is, all right. You know, so yeah. you know, and then you find yourself singing it after a while. It's like that happens with radio support stuff. You know, I think people would, would learn to have a much wider uh, taste yeah. of music. Yeah, for sure. Well, again, you know, I think, uh, you know, once it became a program, instead of, uh, you know, the DJs being able to determine... You know, because DJs typically, they get into doing that sort of thing because they love music. So they have an ear for music, you know. Uh, exactly, yep. And uh, these programmers, the only, the, only, the only thing that's driving that is money. I mean, who's paying for the spot, right? And, I mean. Exactly. What else could it exactly be? Exactly right. Yeah. Well, I mean, music to me and hip hop is being broke. Like big, big songs, at least, are being broke two ways to me. Like one is radio. Yeah. And. Two is the strip club. I mean, I don't mention that uh, um, lightly. I mean, the strip club is a huge breaker of a lot of music. And mm. so a lot of times cats will go into the strip club, and especially if they're backed by somebody that's selling drugs or something that have a lot of disposable cash, yeah. they can they can force a DJ to play a record. But you see, that's terrible by because how much money they're gonna give them. a DJ in that environment, though, is only going to pick certain things. You know, I mean, but that's what we're hearing. Yeah, like yeah, on on pop rate or on major radio stations, yeah. the subject matter that you would basically hear in a strip club is what you're going to hear, and that's why these artists are able to break so big because yeah. if it breaks in the strip club, then radio feels like yo, then this is the, the streets like it. And for, you know, a strip club has a lot of different people that go there, so like a lot of business top business people and and moguls, and then regular street cats and then you know women and blah 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 so it has this cross section of people and that's sort of where a lot of hip-hop music at least the the trap style of it is being broke yeah and for some reason uh a gentleman like speech uh rapping about you know uh being faithful to his wife he's not going to get that uh play in the strip club huh <laughs> nah, yeah. it doesn't even fit the. You know, what I'm right. it doesn't fit the vibe. Right, no doubt. So that all that automatically locks out any conscious music, yeah. any marital music, like you know, talking about marriage or or relationships or even yeah. I love you deeply. You know, anything other than I, you know, I'll bang you tonight. Yeah, that's about it. You know, what I'm saying like right. anything else doesn't really fit. And I want to kind of dwell on this for a second. That that's uh. It's a big reason why I have this tremendous respect for you is because you look at the the explosion of your first album, uh, quadruple platinum, double Grammy winning artist. And then it's like this steep drop off on the next couple albums because you're not changing to fit the, the mold and the narrative of what they want hip hop to look like. So since you right. stick to your principles... You lost that radio support, and you could have at any moment, you know, took that left turn and started making, you know, shit to fit the mold, but you weren't willing to do that. So, again, that's, you know, that's why I think it's important that people people realize, you know, your, what you've done and, and your whole, like, contribution to, to the music, you know? Well, thanks, brother. Well, let me tell you, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, look, from a spiritual perspective, man, there's always there's always opposition to righteousness. And I'm not saying I'm perfect or nothing like that. 
but just just concepts of righteousness always face opposition. And so, you know, at the time that our second album came around, you had the privatization of prisons going on, where it was to pri prisons' benefit to have music that would um, glorify and often even make trendy mm -hmm. a lot of the traits that was putting people in prison in the first place, right. whether it was drug dealing, whether it was doing drugs, you know, casually, like hard drugs casually, like it was just fun to do, whether it was carrying weapons without a license, yep. whether it's, I mean, these things were just being talked about so casually, so, so in, in a sense, fun-like right. that it became trendy. And people that weren't even initially doing that felt like, you know, that's cool. And so more and more people started getting sort of um, intoxicated, in a sense, with a lot of behaviors that obviously lead people into prison, you know, in jail right. over time. So it's... it's um, those things were sort of warned against our success yeah. as a group. You know what I mean? Yeah, no doubt. But it didn't work like that in Japan. So, like, in Japan, they were like, they had enough sense to be like, why would we play this? Like, we don't want our population to be like, <laughs> yeah. going to jail. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would we rock this? It's not even the best hip hop that's out right now. Like, that's what they would say. Mm -hmm. Like, we want to rock, we rock anything that's good. But this ain't even the, some of the best material that's coming out right now. You know what I'm saying? So they would just stick to their guns and thank God because it helped us to stay alive as a group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Financially and, and everything else. Well, that's all. You know? I'm performing for a crowd to be dating me as they jam and rate me for who I was and not rate me for who I am. The lessons that we had was like 20 years in the past and peace within the U.S. They thinking that was our best and our success was the fact three is about all we had despite it we don't get mad and instead we just change the status every show every cd making the doubters think again hurricane when we came in living like sink or swimming we swimming since the beginning the coverage was all on them but we kept stroking our own way not lovers of every trend so we Live stronger, healthier, live longer, win against the grain, just like people that's low carbon. So we doing it, live and direct, you feel how true we is, eyewitnesses to the beauty of life, music is arrested, development, powerful, we influence the music and revolution, until we see more solutions, everybody shake your head, shake out the devil now, Lazarus, raising the dead, come out the tools, child, we're alive now, we're alive now, we're alive now, live it. Every day I rise on a mission Please forgive me if I mess up I'm improving, living, living Honey, baby, I'm just human If the sun shines down on me today I will try to live in a better way Please forgive me when I'm dizzy That's a part of living The more gangsters talk about dying And crack cocaine and the violence The station saturated with it The more our music be thriving People compare and contrast Whatever our beat lacks Made up by the mere fact we're the only other option Seems like I'm an alien, 40 plus years and up 45 is something real if the present say they don't want So the present don't really get my presence and all my points How I think, work, play it, and live it with aching joints They're acting like I'm dumb, including my only son He's 16, acting like that he's going on 61 It's like as if height equals might and wisdom He smirks like he knows what I'ma say before I'm done He just wants to have fun, wanna eat Wanna lay, wanna shop, wanna look a certain way, wanna chill, you wanna stop that craziness. Who in this generation is raised up with pure laziness? Am I further dating us? I know it. They wanna put in their headphones, escape of the world. They wanna get up on their cell phone and relate with little girls. I can dig it to about five feet, 11 inches, but the last inch is where my digging stops. I don't do ditches. I won't put you to death, I brought your life through my sperm and my music. Yeah, I brought it twice, are we doing it? Live and direct, you feel how true we is. Eyewitnesses to the beauty. Of life, music is arrested, development powerful. We influence the music and revolution until we see more solutions. Hey. So we doing it, live and direct, you feel how true we is, eyewitnesses to the beauty of life, music is arrested, development powerful, we influence the music and revolution until we see more solutions, hey, everybody shake your head, shake out the devil now, Lazarus, raising the dead, come out the tools child, we're alive now, we're alive now, we're alive now, live it. Every day I rise on a mission, please forgive me.
I mean, you, it's not just that you uh, talk about doing good. You, you guys, uh, it, it seems like you especially, you got a good heart in you, man. I mean, like, what, uh, I was reading in 05, you won a, a, a contest on NBC, and uh, yeah. they gave you, what, 20 grand, and you just donated it to UNICEF. Yeah, all of it. Yeah. Literally every dime. We didn't make a cent. Well, you know, it was at that time, and I mean, it's still happening now, but at that time, we had learned about the sexual uh, sex trafficking yep. that was happening with the young women, and um, I think it was in the Congo at that time, Yeah. and so we was like, well, we had been to Africa, so we knew, like, we'd been there before, and we knew that $200, like, a lot of Americans don't know this, in certain poor parts of Africa, $200, American dollars, would support a small community for a month. Yeah. So I don't think people understand just how effective not just money is, but what we take for granted here is over in some areas in Africa. I mean, there's rich parts of Africa too. Right. I don't want to make it seem like all of Africa is just destitute and poor, but, but there are areas that are, and, and those monies make a difference. So when we were able to give 20 grand and that was our second time, cause we gave 20 grand to um, the ANC with, Nelson Mandela, when, when he had just gotten released from prison and the ANC was part of his whole administration, we had donated um, 20 grand to them too. And that was, you know, at the time unheard of. Was, uh, Ludacris would later do it and Whitney Houston would later do it. But right. I think, to our knowledge at least, we was the first American group to do that. And um, we knew how effective it would be. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we figured, let's do that, let's try to make change there that's awesome i mean very commendable i mean you know you could have just kept it you know so i mean that's without a doubt yeah I mean, that's awesome you know, for that show we had already agreed to give it to charity so we just had to choose the charity and we chose do stuff yeah but you're right though in the sense that you know numerous times that we didn't have to give it away you know what i'm saying but right. we, we decided to that's awesome we donated half the monies from mr window to the uh, National Coalition of the Homeless uh, here in America. Wow. Like literally half of our proceeds. Yeah. So I look back at it and I laugh sometimes because some of the beefs the group members had with me was that they wouldn't make it as much money. And I'm like, man, it, I, was this a good idea to give half of the proceeds? Yeah. Knowing that if I would have known that we'd have broke up, you know, about two years later. Yeah. But it's all good, you know. You have to you have to live by your heart, man. You do, and you uh, have to strive at least to do the best you can. And you know, people who don't allow themselves to experience it don't realize how good it feels to do good. You know, I mean, it does, man. Yeah, it does. I mean, there's there's not there's not a, a better high out there than like knowing that you positively affected somebody else, and really like that should be. I agree. That should be the goal of every man, woman, and child walking this earth right now is to I agree with you. help to improve the lives of the people around them, you know, and whoever they come in contact yeah, with. Yeah, we, we totally agree, bro. Yeah. I mean, like, one of the things that bothers me the most, I'll tell you what, is when you, like, wave at somebody or say hello or nod your head or something and you get, like, nothing in return, like, you were, like, like you didn't exist, you know what I mean? Like that bothers me. Like why do people why would you do that? Like or why would you not acknowledge another human being that just acknowledge you? Like s simple things, you know? Simple. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, those so simple things. And that that's uh one thing that I pull from your music is that I I feel that you're like this truly genuinely good dude that just wants to like you know improve the world if you can in any way that you can and, and if and you know to me i appreciate that first of all but second of all i just want to say you know i think it was a south african boy that said it but do what you can and what you have where you are yeah and to me if everybody could just do that then 
that's all you can ask for. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like your circle of influence, do what you can. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, no doubt. I think bottom line, you know, human nature is good, but uh, also easily corrupted. I agree with you. Yeah. You know? I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, 1994 you released, let me, let me see if I get this right. Zingalamaduni? Zingalama, Zingalama. That's right. That's right. right. Cool. You, did, you hit it. <laughs> Zingalama. Zingalamaduni. Yeah. That was um. That stands for Beehive of Culture, and that was like our follow-up record. You know, um, it sold probably about five hundred thousand units, but obviously compared to the four million, it, did, it didn't do well. And that was what we were talking about a minute ago. Yeah. That was tough, no man. That was a tough. That was a tough time for me because. You know, I really wanted to be that artist that had that longevity, and, and we have been now, but at that time, when I was, like, in that very moment, it seemed like we was falling off, and, and obviously, to some extent, and to some views, we did, but, like, it was tough, because I was like, man, we're going through all this internal drama, Yeah. the label, one of the things I wish we wouldn't have done is rush the record, like, so, the label wanted to release something for their various quarterly right um you know goals and objectives and we we played along with that because we didn't know any better and I, you know in retrospect i would have said nah yeah we we're not gonna put a record out right until we're number one healed as a group make sure we heal our little issues yeah make those things right and then get back in the studio with the right energy i mean i love the record i'm not saying the record's not what it is i think it's to me, as a music lover, anybody that's out there that's a music lover, you can look at that record and take from it what you will, but I feel like it's a study in a group going through a lot of turmoil and at the same time striving to make a record that progressively moves to the next level. Yeah. Um, it was still a great the first record. record. So, yeah, it was a, yeah, it was so a great a lot of, record. A lot of people really love it. Yeah. There's some people, I mean, fans to this day that say it's their favorite record yeah. of ours. So, I mean... You know, each one, each one has its own opinion. You know, each fan. It's just com but we still play a lot of that music live. Yeah, too. yeah, and no, that was a great album. It, it's just that you know, the uh, the radio support had lessened quite a bit. I think Definitely. at that point, and that Definitely. that was the main thing there, man. And but big time. But now, you know, to be a hundred percent honest with you, and I hate to say this, but I almost felt like there was that gap between that album. And then I just heard, uh, you know, like uh, your 2016 work. And I thought it was like this huge gap yeah. between. But no, 2000, you release an album. 2002, you release an album, right? 2003, 4, yeah. 6, 10, 12, 16. And now you got like new stuff coming out in 17 already. You have yeah. been working, you know? Yeah, it's true. Well, you know, because we had that support, overseas yeah we were able to release these records and literally every one of them had successful singles off of it and did well but not in america so they did really well in japan so australia that blows my so fucking like, mind you know, man my bad but yeah you know here we are sitting yeah, here i'm a i'm a damn hip-hop aficionado you know and i and i don't know about all these albums coming out and in japan they're hits you know like yeah. How how is this? Like <laughs> it's just I don't know, man. It's so cool to me. Like, yeah, you know, we literally like you know, when we dropped our Heroes of the Harvest album, which was in two thousand, uh -huh. that had two hits from it and then we toured that record all throughout Tokyo I mean Japan. Yeah. And it was, you know, packed out, sold out tours. Then we did um Among the Trees album, I think was our next record, I forget now. Oh four. <laughs> and well, extended that revolution record, was that a album or a? Uh, that was just no. That was just a, a like single? a single that some labels put out with various older material. Oh, okay. But then when we finally did release Among the Trees, that was a a real pivotal time for the group because we had um first of all added some new members. Mm -hmm. um, One Love joined the group at that point. Farida joined the group at that point. So we had some new members joining in and some old members leave. And we, that record blew up not only in Japan, but we also, it was huge in Israel and like in the Middle East. So it was just really weird, the the territories that were picking up on this music. And so 
we started touring over there. We was doing huge, like uh, 20,000 seaters uh-huh. in Israel, like in Jerusalem, you know what I'm saying? Like headlining Jerusalem and stuff. It's like, but people wouldn't know, you know what I mean? Like in the States, you wouldn't know because it wasn't talked about here. But over there, it was like really a lot of love. Yeah. And um, our song, Honeymoon Day, which we did off that album, that song literally was a hit for like almost a year straight on the charts. Yeah. And, um, but in, a- in Asia, not even in Japan this time, it was actually in, uh, in, in Singapore and Jakarta and all of these areas. Yeah. So it was really cool. It was just like, wow, these, these fans are finding our music, you know? Yeah. Well, I remember when uh, I used to have a job where I was like painting aircraft interiors, right? And they would fly me all over the place. I went to Jamaica. Nice. I went to Jamaica with that job, and everyone was telling me, because I was going to be by myself in Jamaica. He said, don't leave the hotel room. You know, like, it's not safe, blah, blah, blah. All this, right. All this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I went out there, and uh, my hotel wasn't even in, like, the tourist area, because they wanted me, like, closer to the airport or whatever. It was, like, this New Kingston Boulevard, like, right down there. I'm, I'm, I just walk out, and I, I'm hanging out on the streets. I met a couple of cool cats. As soon as I busted, like, like I like I, I was talking to this one dude that was like you know selling beers out of a, like a cooler, and then uh, so I, I bought a red uh, red stripe and I and uh, he was telling me you know somehow we got on the, the subject of music and I just I was like you know I rap, he was like no way, and I start rapping for him and all of a sudden like there's a group of people around me and from that point on, like I was so cool with everybody, and. Uh, me as a young dude at that time like it just it kind of really like blew me away and put me in shock like something that started in uh parks and house parties and stuff in, in new york city has spread around the world and has this tremendous power you know that yeah that no doubt. all these people that didn't know me from a hole in the ground i'm not from there you know like they started treating me like family dude i mean like at one point i had lost my wallet and uh not only were they like helping me look for it, but like they would like buy me a beer and a meal and stuff. And and you're talking about people that didn't right. didn't have nowhere near the money I had, you know? And, exactly. And it, yeah. So uh, again, coming back around to it, man, like like I feel like people are good, and but easily corrupted. And you know, if we you can reach that good nature in people, man, that's powerful. And and you know. Yeah, I'm with you on all of that. Yeah. You know, people told us. When we first went to Africa, don't go, you know, don't get out your hotel in Johannesburg. They're going to rob you, gunpoint, uh-huh. Jack. And it has happened to some of our friends, but none of, but when we went out, because of the music, personally, I think it's because of the music, people had a deep respect, man. It's like, we didn't get nothing but love. We never had no dangerous situations happen to us. Yeah. And we'll go right in the middle of everything, like in the heart of all the drama. You know, it's like, and there's still no, no problems. I was just in a prison. This uh, last week in Virginia, and again, just nothing but respect because people know. I think people can feel where you're coming from, and if yeah. they they feel like you're coming from a place of, you know, love and, and positivity on a real tip, and not just exploitation or whatever. Uh, Do you, prefer- you know, I think that, that people respect that. Yeah. You know, in general, I know that there's still cats out there that are, that are, that are do the wrong thing. I'm not saying right. I'm not oh yeah. Naive, but I'm just saying. In general, I think you're right. You know, people people want to do the right thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah, no doubt. And a lot of times, you know, it, it's it's kind of messed up how people won't, you know, they'll, they'll look at a problem that you know, like that person did this. Okay, but what's the root cause of that? You know, like why why don't we exactly. why don't we start addressing yeah. the root causes of the things instead of just looking at that exactly. one individual that performed an act? You know, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah, totally with you. So. The the most recent music, I mean, you've kept up the quality. Yo, are y'all even still doing anything? Because um, I, I don't hear y'all see y'all in these streets. We always up in the streets. That's where we be at. We be in the streets. Nah, nah, nah. I mean, like, yo, is, is anybody feeling y'all? Well, I, I think so. If they're smart. <laughs> 
I'll be, I'll be knowing what to say to y'all. I don't, you know. Got the pear trees faking like a dogwood. The thunderstorms in the springtime, it's all good. And rappers killing it in the club, but can we brag now? Not black lives just had to die to get a flag down. And my rap has helped the rapper Southside Atlanta. Was just a Selma, 50 years march in Alabama. Was just a Columbus, Ohio teaching little kids. South by Southwest and Austin teaching sampling. That kind of colleges, I do a lot of interviews. And I'm making some nice figures like a gym or do. And like Sandra Bland, my band be changing lanes without a signal at all. Now you want us to hang? You know some things are substantial, whether or not financial. And playing us will put others stuck way up on the mantle. So don't try to adjust your radio, don't change your channel. We're taking down the glittery lights and just light a candle. Come on. He said, I don't see you at the club. I said, I don't see you at the bank. People gotta live their life and do their thing. Let me live, let me breathe, let me be me. He said, I don't see you at the club. I said, I don't see you at the bank. People gotta live their life and do their thing. Let me live, let me breathe, let me be me. He said, I don't see you at the club. I said, I don't see you at the bank. People gotta live their life and do their thing. Let me live, let me breathe, let me be me. Let me live, let me breathe, let me be me. Let me live, let me breathe, let me be me. Let me live, let me breathe, let me be me. Anybody checking for arrested development? Yeah. I'm seeing marriages dying just like miscarriages. We've been at it two zero years, changing the narrative. Father to my two kids, plus to add to my parenting. We took on a teen in a desperate need of a family. He was jacking cars with some other type of insanity. Playing the role that media says is his humanity. Blacks is getting smoked with police taking the tote. They hate it when we do stand up and yet they like a joke. Hey! The people losing hope to where most of them don't vote. And rappers turn into trap and dope. Really means dope. I'm trying not to become so Someone I don't know. Look into a mirror. Is it friend or is it foe? foe? Or is it bo Should I swim or should I float? Should I blend in within the scene that fits me most? Should I live life and try to fight for what I know? What I know is that my real life starts after the show. He said, I don't see you at the club. I said, I don't see you at the bank. People gotta live their life and do their thing. Let me live, let me breathe, let me be me. He said, I don't see you at the club. I said, I don't see you at the bank. People gotta live their life and do their thing. Let me live, let me breathe, let me be me. Let me live, let me breathe, let me be me. Let me live, let me breathe, let me be me. Let me live, let me breathe, let me be me. Finally consoling from years of mine that was stolen A sea of creativity coming just like an ocean I'm falling in love with music as if I drank a potion My rhyming and my producing has never been more potent I've overcome my challenge and life has been more imbalanced Then people want to judge me on everything but my talent They saying that I'm old like it's something I can't control Aging is part of the package deal of having a soul And what do you know? All you got to do is play the role of living life and just breathing Lines start to recede, things you start to believe in Perspectives that you're seeing Regardless of your hue, it's just common to human beings they tell me that you the strength is wasted on the young and that everything that you have been has been wasted on some fun but i believe that i can have fun until i'm deceased just please play the song in the clubs and in the streets i'm out i don't see you at the club right yeah that was a great track and uh yeah thank and you. i was like man yeah. hold on so these guys are still doing it and and i and i looked it up man and uh you know uh now recently you know i started getting into all of uh all this music all this great music that i that i hadn't realized existed and you know it's uh it's really brought me brought me back to that time period some of the shit i was doing back then but at the same time like just brought me this new uh you know i've got a lot of catching up to do i guess is what i should be saying you know like i yeah well Definitely, you could go either to our website or to our YouTube channel. Yeah. So our YouTube channel, we just have a playlist. And that would be cool because then you can see the videos too. But it's like, you just go down the playlist. We got a playlist of probably about 12 tracks that you got to hear that you probably don't know exist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, well, I've been doing that so, and I've also been uh, buying stuff off iTunes. What What's the best way, up. like like for, for right now, like as, as a fan, like for, for the fans out there, What's the best way for them to get music from you that that helps you the most? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, we get paid the most from our website. So ArrestedDevelopmentMusic.com okay. will give us the most. When you go to iTunes, it's, it's love, and we appreciate it, of course. 
But out of every 99 cent, or I'll just round it up to a dollar, we get 70 cent. Right. iTunes is going to grab 30. Yeah. So. And that's um, actually respectable you know, amongst most avenues. Yeah. So, like, you know, if you could go to the website, the rest of development music.com, we'll get 100% of that. You yeah. Know what I'm okay. Sweet. Or, well, well, minus whatever it costs you to make a CD or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You got vinyl available? No, not on our website. So that, like, they just released vinyl of our first album. Okay. Um, it came out, I think, like March, maybe twentieth or something like that. So they just released. Um, actually, it's red vinyl. Nice. Uh, it's pretty nice. I think it might be orange, actually, orange vinyl. And uh, that just came out. Okay, I'm gonna look that but up. That, but we didn't put it out ourselves. So we we had another company to let us know that they was about to do it. Yeah. And we was like, definitely, let's make it happen. Well, I'm a vinyl addict, so I might have to pick that one up. <laughs> I agree, yeah. bro. You got to get that joint. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a, a must get. Yeah, and I imagine to have that's that gonna first be limited. album on, on vinyl. Yeah, 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 no doubt. We do have some vinyl, though. The truth is, we we have some vinyl. We haven't put it up on our site just yet, but we'll we'll put it up soon because we got vinyl of Zingala Maduni, some of our newer stuff. Nice. Um. We just haven't put it up on the site just yet. We're about to drop it in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I'll shoot you my address. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely yeah. will. No doubt. What have you been up to? It's been so long since we heard from you folks on Wax. Round Wax.
So, uh, how's everything looking then? I mean, you're not planning on slowing down, or I mean, not right now. Future you know projection. I mean? Like, it's yeah. You know, it's like at this point, we got a few things in the pot. So, like, yeah. I just got out of this prison system. I was doing some music with some of the inmates there. Really? And that's coming out like in 2018. Okay. I'm fired up about that. And then we also, um. I got, I'm writing a screenplay with another uh, screenplay writer for an Arrested Development movie, which might be for TV, don't get me wrong, but like, yeah. we're doing that right now, and that's, that's exciting, because yeah. a, a lot of the details of our story have yet to be told, and so we're, we're working on that, and of course, you know, like I said, we'll drop singles here and there, we just dropped a song called In One Day, which hit, uh, got the number one on the Hip Hop Gods radio chart, just... Um, two days ago awesome so yeah fired up about that yeah i was just listening yeah, so, to that track yesterday yeah so that's like you know so we just dropped that joint and you know we'll keep on dropping little little little, little hints of music here and there yeah yeah no it's a, it's a great track too man i like it thank you so uh is that that's going to be on on an album then or uh yeah probably you okay. know nowadays it's so the industry is so different, you know, like right. it's not really packaged in album ways anymore. So yeah, you can just keep it may or may not singles. ever reach an album. Right. Exactly. Just releasing music in general, like a single here and there or yeah. an EP here and there. Yeah. Or just whatever, because to us, it's really about just making just creative contributions. Yeah. Because my mom's a newspaper publisher. So like the way I was raised is just to put the story out there. Yeah. And even if people don't resonate with the story at that time, it's still a story that needed to be put out at that time. And then let it, let it be a capsule, you know, a time capsule. Maybe people will go back and find it later. It's like how, you know, you said you love vinyl. I did too. So like I go find rare grooves yep. that never hit, but they're crazy. Yeah. And it means a lot that they released it. Like to me, I'm glad that they released it. Yep. So it's, to me, I feel the same way. It's like, no, nah, don't hold up, you know, just release the music, get it out of you. Let it be out there. Yeah. It'll find its space, whether it be in this time period or maybe another time period, the people will look back and say, Yeah, you know, wow, look at the what Arrested Development did back in, you know, whatever, two thousand seventeen yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's still good. Uh, to me, like you, you gotta keep I'm fine with people stopping if that's their if that's their prerogative. Right. But for me personally, I feel like it's important to keep on being alive. All right, man. Well uh let everybody know where they can find you. ArrestedDevelopmentMusic.com and YouTube forward slash Arrested Development. Those are the two places that we would suggest people to just check us out okay. and vibe with us. But um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and of course, they're always available on iTunes and Spotify and everywhere else. But, you know. Uh, exactly. Spotify. Um, you know what I'm saying, Tidal, yeah. all of these various places, people can peep us out there too. Yeah, okay. Well, whenever I have an MC on the line, I always try to spit one verse for him. So can I can I give you a verse? Oh, of course. It'd be a pleasure. Yeah, right. my pleasure. Cool. All right, so check it out. <clears throat> Let's see. All right, I'll do this. It's a new age, man in the grace with technology. Power solar rays, nanobots, and now biology. More than just a novelty for outspace oddity. Augmented reality, visually, audibly. This ought to be pure artistry pouring out of the heart of me. You momo mouth rappers keep sounding so damn retarded beat. No one on my team is any less than a master craftsman. Microphone commandos eating up all of your rations. I still respect talent. Call me old fashioned. Don't care how many streams you get or live in a mansion. You got the skills to property rock that microphone. Get off it. Your days of number fans are getting tired of all that soft shit. We stay above. Above average and keep the bars up set it high as the dude at the counter of starbucks went on a mic or the beats or the tables it's all love hip-hop the culture we've got to preserve for all of us there we go <laughs> nice that's crazy i love it dude i gotta sit one too then i love it okay i'm gonna sit one too good no more gangsters talk about dying and crack cocaine and the violence and station saturated with it. The more our music be thriving, people compare and contrast. Whatever our beat lacks is made up by the mere fact we're the only other option. That's it. I just stop right there. You know what I'm saying? Like we just I love I love I love doing verses like spitting bars with people. No that's, doubt. That's nice, man. Good job. Yeah, man. I love your flow, man. And and the subject matter. I appreciate it, man. I mean, yeah, it's when when it's in your heart, it's a different thing, you know, like 
Like it, exactly. it kind of, you know, it's a trip when you see them. Uh, a lot of the young dudes, like they, they want, they put them on a the spot. You know, like, hey, you want to, you know, will you spit on this or whatever? And they're like, they, you could tell they're not used to it. Like we right, used to do exactly, that shit yeah. like all the time. You know, we would be beaten yeah, on the too. lunch table and rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. It was no doubt about it. It was just such a big uh, part of the culture in the eighties and nineties, and uh, you know, I, yeah, I, I do miss that about it. But but like I say, the quality there's still some great music coming out. So, dude, no doubt about it. I wish you guys the best. You know, I, I wish you the best. Uh, like I say, I can tell you're a genuinely good dude, and that matters to me. You know what I mean? So, no doubt. I appreciate that, man. And it's been a good interview, dude. I love I love your your love for the culture, for the music, and uh, you know it's very impressive. You know, for you to know anything about Australian artists, and that's like. That's somebody that really loves music. So much love to you, man. And, and we'll, I'll always be willing to do anything for your show. So I appreciate what you're doing, man. All right. Appreciate what you're doing, man. Keep it up, brother. Always. All right, man. Peace out. Thank you. Let's just do some of the fellas in the group. Back, back, back on the drum. We got our dynamite drummer.